I wanted someone who was strong and who was ready to be president on day one. Will you pronounce your name for yeah. me, please? It's Kamala. Kamala. Kamala Harris. Hi, Kamala Harris. It's really inspiration because knowing that she was born in Oakland. She's from here. She knows what we go through. Kamala's come from this neighborhood. She knows the steps from below to up high. Do not be constrained by tradition. Do not listen when they say it can't be done. She comes at a time when a lot of doors are opening and she's not afraid to walk through them. It is about having new leadership. We can have change. I think it's a journey that is frankly an inspiration. It really means a lot for someone African-American to be in office making a change. I feel a sense of responsibility to stand up and fight. She has a lot of important work to do. The work's just starting, so let's get going. Your next Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. That's what my mother said. She said, Kamala, you may be the first to do many things, but make sure you're not the last. The road to the White House for Kamala Harris started here, on this block, Browning and Bancroft in West Berkeley. So this is West Berkeley. This is my house where I grew up, 2236 Browning Street. Because of a lot of redlining in the Bay Area, they ended up here in West Berkeley, which was predominantly black, brown, immigrant community. Lots of Caucasians here too, but a very integrated neighborhood. So this is where Carmel and I grew up. Not far from neighboring Oakland, the birthplace of the Black Panther Party, founded just two years after Kamala's birth at Kaiser Hospital in Oakland in 1964. Not far from the University of California, Berkeley, one of the premier academic institutions on the West Coast where her parents met for the first time, a crossroad that would mold the future vice president. Huey Newton was a regular in our neighborhood. Black Panthers had a breakfast program down the street at West Campus. So we would see Huey all the time. What I remember so much about Kamala is that she was very kind. I also remember her taking care of Maya. I mean, she was very attentive. You know, she took care of her sister. A strength she by all accounts inherited from her mother, Shamala Gopalan, a gifted woman with a sharp mind who bravely immigrated from India to study science at UC Berkeley in 1958, at a time when few women were in the field even more rare, an immigrant woman of color. Shamala would connect Kamala to her rich South Asian heritage with her name, meaning lotus flower, a plant growing underwater with flowers rising above the surface, root planted firmly in the river's bottom. Shamala met Kamala's father, Donald Harris, on the Berkeley campus protesting during the civil rights movement. He also immigrated to the States from Jamaica and was a brilliant scholar who would go on to teach economics at Stanford University. Her only sibling, sister Maya, was born three years after she was. A couple of years after Maya's birth, their parents separated, making the young girls incredibly close. The younger Harris, also an attorney, would go on to have a major influence on Kamala's life and political career, a life filled with first. There was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. We were close to the bus stop and Kamala and Meyer were close to the bus stop. But somehow we always ended up running. <laughs> Never close enough. <laughs> when Kamala brought it up on the debate stage and said she was in the second class of the kids that integrated the Berkeley Public School, I think it really just hit me so hard. I was like, wow, I didn't realize that something I, I even thought about and, and it was something I enjoyed. I got a great education at Thousand Oaks. Bus ride was probably about 30 to 40 minutes. See the change in the neighborhood as we drive through. This is what we saw too sitting on the bus. This is where Kamala and, and myself, my sisters and Maya, we all went to school here. In her memoirs, The Truths We Hold, Harris celebrates the diversity made possible by what she calls a national experiment in desegregation, sending working class black kids in one direction and wealthier white kids in the other. That diversity is woven into the fabric of her identity, a superpower of sorts as she broke barrier after barrier. My mother used to have a saying and she would say to me, um, Kamala, you may be the first to do many things, but make sure you're not the last. And 
Kamala is claiming both her identities. She's proud to be a black woman. She's proud about her Indian heritage. And she claims them both. And she let, drops lots of clues, right? Implicit and explicit about her pride and her joy in belonging to those groups. Her life experiences would become even more diverse when Kamala was in middle school. Her mother moved her and the two girls to Montreal, Canada. She accepted a teaching opportunity at a university. Kamala was 12 at the time. She finished middle and high school in Montreal, visiting the Bay Area for summer breaks and holidays. In the early 80s, Harris moved back to the state and took her first lap around the nation's capital, studying economics and political science at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Howard is often referred to as the Mecca, signifying its place as one of the most illustrious historically black colleges or universities in the entire country. I try to tell people that these are not just schools where African-Americans or people from the African diaspora go to. They're schools that are really dipped in excellence. We've definitely been blessed to have had her on part of her journey, made sure that she was very well equipped and, and well prepared. But also, I think she gained her confidence, as she has said herself, for that next step. You could do anything, and you didn't have to be confined by anyone else's idea of what it means to be black. The first African-American justice to sit on that Supreme Court was Thurgood Marshall, a Howard alum. What this will mean is that she would have cracked that glass ceiling, if not smashed it, with a Howard hammer. <laughs> this is a fight to define what kind of country we are. And it's a fight to determine what kind of country we will be. And it's a fight to determine whether we are willing to stand up for our deepest values. Because let's be clear, we are better than this. She would pledge Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority her last semester senior year, gaining a greater sisterhood in the AKAs, the first historically African-American Greek lettered sorority founded on Howard's campus. Harris graduated in 1986. By now, DC was known as Chocolate City for its majority African-American population that was reflected in its culture. The mayor was black, black arts and businesses flourished, and for the first time in her life, Harris found herself in the majority. She then returned to the San Francisco Bay Area, deciding to pursue a career in the legal field. She attended the University of California Hastings in San Francisco for law school, where in her second year, she became the president of the Black Law Students Association. She earned her law degree in 89. By 1990, she was a deputy district attorney for Alameda County, working for the people in her hometown where her representation alone would go on to inspire many. So I first met her, um, it was a long time ago. She was working at the Alameda County District Attorney's Office. It was really great to see really an African-American woman involved and she was a prosecutor. She was someone who people respected. She was well-spoken and so just from afar, I always admired her. I would describe her as determined, intelligent, fun, interesting, and also she's been a mentor, but she's more like a mother. So I think the name Mamala is so perfect for her because she provides you with advice and support, but she also tries to find out what is going on with you and are you taking care of yourself? As a San Francisco Chronicle columnist, I've been covering the politics and the personalities of the Bay Area for as long as I can remember, maybe too long. Even when you first met her, you knew something was there. There was an intelligence, there was a vibrancy, and there was that essential ingredient in all political success, ambition. There's no question that Kamala Harris made the most of her contacts and personal relationships in San Francisco. The leading of that is former Mayor Willie Brown, who was the House Speaker of the time when she first met him. She would later date him briefly. He also sort of introduced her to the Knob Hill set and the Pacific Heights set. They are the financiers of the political machine in San Francisco, a key ingredient in that. And along with Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown, and Willie Brown, she became part of that group as well. Never underestimate Kamala Harris. She has been a winner 
each and every time she has sought public office. After eight years in Alameda County, she'd crossed the bay to San Francisco to become assistant district attorney. After two years, she left the job, then working in San Francisco City Hall under city attorney Louise Reney, one of her first supporters when she challenged her old boss in 2002 to become San Francisco DA. It would be Harris's first time appearing on a ballot. In order to run the office, she had to run for office, as she said in her memoir. As I hold the office. As I hold the office. Of District Attorney of the City and County of San Francisco. Of District Attorney of the City and County of San Francisco. Congratulations. <laughs> This was her office, so when we moved in, mm -hmm. Terrence had moved out all the furniture. So when we walked in, he had, out of her office, left nothing. So she worked like this. It was just like a chair and a phone for like two weeks. <laughs> Connell had served in the office as an assistant district attorney. We had never had a woman. We had never had a person of color. Very few places in California, or for that matter, across the United States, had ever had a female DA. And Julian, a lot of people at the time were like, you should not do that. Do not go up against this incumbent. She's like, I'm gonna go for this. <laughs> That's kind of been the theme of this campaign, hasn't it? That he doesn't prosecute anybody. <laughs> and put my name out there and run for DA. People always underestimate how hard she works. I remember so clearly walking into the first California District Attorneys Association meeting with Kamala and she starts talking about recidivism reduction and re-entry services and the things, the vision that she had for the office. And I just remember some people in the room looking at her, you know, like what has happened here? <laughs> Who is this person? Immediately after winning, she faced her first political crisis when Isaac Espinosa, a San Francisco police officer, was gunned down that she wouldn't seek the death penalty for the person who did it. I uh, have been very clear that I am not seeking the death penalty as district attorney because life without possibility of parole is a severe consequence. And that sent a chill right down her and the police officers association and even got her a very public sort of reprimand from Dianne Feinstein at the funeral. That was one of the key chilling moments of her career. At the end of Harris's tenure as district attorney, violent crime was down, murder and manslaughter numbers were cut in half, and burglary and aggravated assault dropped by double digits. I think people get it wrong oftentimes because they just say, well, she's a prosecutor, she tried to lock up a lot of black and brown people, and that is just not entirely accurate when you look at the details of what was happening in San Francisco at the time and also some of the innovative programs that she pushed for to give people a second chance. During her stay, she'd worked to help not criminalize sex workers and get first-time nonviolent offenders back on track instead of incarcerated. Next, Harris's political ambitions would take her to a statewide office, elected to Attorney General of California in 2010. For being a voice that is a new voice in the process and in the way that we believe we should always be inclusive as a party in recognizing that we have a big tent, which means that we welcome those who we may not have seen in the tent before and we value their contribution. That was the closest race of her life and it wasn't decided on election night. It took weeks of vote counting. After three weeks of vote counting and a swinging tally, her challenger conceded, handing her the headline to her long list of first, the first African-American, first woman, and first Asian-American to become attorney general in the Golden State. She'd get there with the help of a political ally, also no stranger to first. Obama, after he won that Senate seat, one of the first trips he took was right here to San Francisco to do a fundraiser for Kamala. When he ran for president, Kamala was one of the first ones to support him in the state. She was the first elected in California to stand with him. What a lot of people don't realize is that Kamala Harris's decision to support Barack Obama, which was genuine, which was, was a genuine connection there, philosophically and personally, cost her. Some of her key donors were big Hillary Clinton people, and they did not like the idea that she went with him.
During her time as Attorney General, she defended the state's use of the death penalty, despite opposing its use years earlier as San Francisco District Attorney, but also fought against voter-approved Prop 8, the state constitutional amendment which saw only marriage between a man and a woman as valid. The wedding bells are about to ring. <laughs> During her tenure as California's top cop, she focused on school truancy by pushing criminal penalties for parents of children missing from school, a policy from her days as DA. Her team also improved DNA testing to clear backed up state crime labs and rape test kits. Harris's office would write the manual on implicit bias training for police officers, support law enforcement wearing body cameras, and require all agencies in the state to collect data on people shot and killed by police. She sort of got to pick and choose what she was going to do, and she does that well. And so, you know, she evolves over time and adapts with that. Soon, her voice would have a much larger platform. I will not be running for the Senate in 2016. No exploratory committees or coy responses for Attorney General Kamala Harris. In her Facebook announcement this morning, she says, I'm launching my campaign to be a voice for the people of California in the United States Senate. Harris was the early favorite and landed a decisive victory on election night. Thanks to major endorsements from then California Governor Jerry Brown, outgoing President Barack Obama, and his Vice President, Joe Biden. When she ran, that was almost considered like, is this the right move for her? Because at the time, it appeared that Hillary Clinton was going to be the president. And Kamala Harris, by being the newly elected senator from California, was going to be in the back, was going to go to Washington and likely would not be heard of for years to come. What happened was an election night. It wasn't Hillary Clinton. It was Donald Trump. On that night, she made that infamous, we will resist, we will fight. She was the voice that came out of the West that night to the country and to the world. Do we retreat or do we fight? I say we fight. I intend to fight. I intend to fight for Black Lives Matters. I intend to fight for truth and transparency and trust. I intend to fight. I intend to fight for a woman's access to health care and reproductive health rights. I intend to fight against those naysayers who suggest that there is no such thing as climate change. I intend to fight for our environment. I intend to fight for the civil rights of all people, including those that we always fought for in terms of allowing them to marry the person they love. I intend to fight. And it was immediately picked up. Who is this person in California? And she instantly became one of the leaders of the resistance. And that moment created the Kamala Harris that is today. In the Senate, she put her prosecutorial prowess front and center, often making headlines and grabbing national attention. And it is incumbent on the Attorney General of the United States to fight for the civil rights of all people. I think you're thinking of someone and you don't want to tell us. A present and moment that would be maimed. It would eventually make her a household name, even if people tripped over it. With her election to the Senate, she shattered yet another glass ceiling, becoming the first Indian American woman and just the second black woman to serve as a senator. And just two years into her tenure, she was ready to shatter expectations once again. I am running for president of the United States. Well, and, <laughs> and I'm very excited about it. I'm running for president because I love my country. I love my country. I'm running to be president of the people, by the people, and for all people. Despite strong debate performances, that's why we need to pass the Equality Act, and a strong run in the early laps of the most crowded field of Democratic presidential hopefuls in history, she ran out of money and called it quits before the Iowa caucuses, ending her bid for the White House. It is with deep regret, but also with deep gratitude, that I am suspending our campaign today. But I want to be clear with you, I am still very much in this fight. Biden won the Democratic Party's nomination. In the backdrop, racial tension spilled over into the streets, fueled by high-profile police killings of black people. Biden's response, a short list of running mates dominated by women of color. 
Despite their early debate clashes, he included Harris, noting on a pad, do not hold grudges. I kind of had a feeling, you know, for weeks leading up to it, and something just, just told me, or I just felt that it was gonna be her. We were each other's first friend back when we were about five years old, kindergarten. She could not have made it as far as she has without dealing with just unimaginable obstacles and challenges every step of the way. And she's a fighter, but she holds true to herself. Hi, 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 sorry to keep you. No, that's all right. You ready to go to work? Oh my God. I'm so ready to go to work. Maybe about an hour or two before the announcement, Carol texts me. And we were just, you know, like sending little, you know, text messages back and forth, you know, fingers crossed and, you know, praying and, you know, that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, both my work phone and my personal cell phone just started blowing up. I was overwhelmed. I mean, crying tears of joy. Now let me introduce to you, for the first time, your next Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. The junior senator from California became the first black and first South Asian woman to appear on a major party ticket in U.S. history. The announcement stole the headlines, trended on social media, and deeply touched the hearts and souls of so many. Uh, if on November 4th we wake up uh, with a Vice President Harris, uh, what will that mean to you as someone who knows her and what will that mean for you as a black woman? Excuse me. Um, very personal. It's amazing. And it, it really shows what people of color have the capability to do if they're given a chance. And uh, it's very, very, um, I'm very proud and um, I'm excited for the possibilities. And I think that's another thing that's been, I think, heavy on her shoulders at times, given all the barriers that she's broken through, but also this awesome responsibility that she holds really tightly of, she's representing, you know, all the young black and Indian girls. You know, she's representing so many women that, you know, look at her on that debate stage and say, wow, there she is. She spent the home stretch of the race to the White House on the attack for her running mate, taking on President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence head on. Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. In. We have seen a pattern with this administration, which is they don't believe in science. And Joe's plan is about saying, we're gonna deal with it, but we're also gonna create jobs. Donald Trump, when asked about the wildfires in California, and, and the question was, you know, the science is telling us this, you know what Donald Trump said? Science doesn't know. She turned heads with her swag on the campaign trail, the music choices, I'm gonna spend a little time. the shoe choices, and her cooking. I don't wanna suffer the consequences of our future president not liking my Indian food. The entire time, her husband, Doug Imhoff, cheering her on. Her determination and drive, helping secure the presidency for the former Vice President, Joe Biden. All across the nation, little girls woke up, especially little black and brown girls, who so often feel overlooked today, just maybe they're seeing themselves for the first time in a new way. How would you say she walks into being the first in so many regards? Rather comfortably rather comfortably. Uh, I think she walks in the first very, very comfortably. I say job well done. I say, you know, thank you for, it makes me a little emotional, job well done. But I'm gonna get a chance to turn something back on her that she does to me all the time. She refers to me as Mr. President. And I'm gonna get a chance to see Madam Vice President. Uh, congratulations. Kamala Harris is an African-American woman. I'm an African-American woman. We're both in politics. We both fight for our communities. It's like I'm seeing myself in this administration. Having gone to Howard myself and then following um, sort of in her footsteps going to UC Hastings and now being co-president of, um, of Balsa here, I think that it's been something to really watch and see just how much she's been able to do. You know, as a black woman at Hastings in law school, it really just does feel like the sky's the limit. Think about all those young women and those girls looking up to her and seeing her as the vice president. 
and seeing her, right, as a woman of color, as black and South Asian little girls or young women, breaking with their scripts, their expectations about who can be presidential or vice presidential. I am so proud of you. You are the vice president of the United States of America, and I know that you're going to get it done. You go, girl. You did it. You've earned it.